Now, if it's not invertible, we cannot use Green's function. We cannot get a unique solution. So that means we just dump that whole section. And what happens is we just go backwards and say, well, how are we going to approach this? And the next one is, what is it? Uh, equals negative one. Equals negative one. And so now, part B is let's solve. Let's find all solutions to L of U equals minus 1. I don't have to redo the initial condition, the boundary conditions, because the boundary conditions are tied up in here. If I'm going to solve this, L only looks at things that satisfy the boundary conditions. So any solution must. And so what we do is, well, let's just go back to the beginning and say, well, we're going to have uh, u double prime plus u equals minus 1. If we're going to solve this, can't use Green's function, so we just go back to 316. And we say, well, the solution to this thing, and this is the right a general solution. I beg your pardon? If you try to use Green's function, uh, your Green's function turns out to be not defined. If you try and use Green's function, you have to come up with a U1 and a U2. And what will happen is your U1 and U2 will be dependent, and your Rothschild will be zero, and your Green's function will not be defined. Remember, when we talked about Green's function, we said we had to have a U1 that satisfied the left boundary condition, a U2 that satisfied the right boundary condition, and that those things had to be independent. And well, what's happening here, essentially, that everything that satisfies the left boundary condition is automatically going to satisfy the right boundary condition. And so what that, the, the upshot is that the U1 and U2 are going to be dependent, <coughs> the rod skin is going to be zero, and you can't divide by it, and Green's function just falls apart. You know, when you work these problems, you're getting a, you're getting a rod skin equal to zero, and you know that something's wrong, I mean, in the papers that I've graded, but it's like you're just not too sure what's wrong, and you, and you flail in all directions. The only thing that's wrong is that Green's function doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because your original operator wasn't invertible. Your operator was not invertible in the first place, so you don't expect it. If I've got something that's zero, the fact that I can't divide by it just cons confirms my, uh, my belief that the thing is zero. And L being in not invertible is essentially that problem. It is too zero-ish. I can't divide by it. I have to divide by the operator to find a Green's function. I mean, that's the idea. It's like AX equals B. When A is equal to zero, I do not expect I'll have X is equal to B divided by A. So when the operator is not invertible, I do not expect to be able to find a Green's function. And when I try, what is the manifestation of that is the fact the Rodskin is not zero. And the Rodskin appears in the denominator of the Green's function. <clears throat> well, the general solution of this thing is going to be U of X. We're going to have the homogeneous. Now, I'm not going to. Let me, let me write this down just to emphasize. I'm talking about the general solution of this. I am not using L because I'm no longer requiring, right at this point, to find the general solution that U satisfies the boundary conditions. I have just been too strict. I have asked too much. So what I've got to do is to go back and say, OK, I'm not going to ask anything at all except let me just find some U's that satisfy this. Let me just slack off a minute. Let me get something down on the paper to work with. And what we get is C1 sine x plus C2 cosine x minus 1. Here's our homogeneous, and it's general, two arbitrary constants. Here's our particular. On the test, I have seen you solve the harmonic oscillator like a jillion times now. I don't want to see it. I do not want to see e to the i <laughs> and stuff in here. 
By now you have paid your dues when you see the harmonic oscillator, that homogeneous thing, you write down the solution. Now, if you've got a sine out here, a sine 2x or something, I'd like to see variation of parameters. If you've got a minus 1, I don't want to see it. You have paid your dues. You've had constants. You've used uh, undetermined coefficients. You have shown that that constant is trivial to find. And you've done that. Now you can write them down. This is a little rite of passage that we're having here this morning. So. Now, uh, when it comes to this, I've, I've seen you solve these differential equations. So on that exam, I don't want to see that. And now, of course, what's going to happen is, so you're going to go a little bit too far. And you're not going to put things. I'm going to say, I want to see your work. I mean, there's always this conflict. It's called prisoners and guards. Prisoners always act like prisoners, and guards always act like guards. <coughs> Uh, let's just go here.